Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome to another episode of the Oak Mountain ACOTS. Well, in today's video, we're going to chase some more white ash logs. So our buyer called the other day and he wanted to know how many board feet of saw logs we had ready for him and we told him. And uh, he said that he had a 12,000 pound capacity on his trailer and he wanted to make a full load if he could. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them there, but uh, we're gonna go chase some more white ash this morning because he's coming next weekend to pick them up. Stick around. <laughs> Hey guys, we've got the saws all ready to go this morning before we started filming. Should be full of gas and oil and ready to go. Now the first question I have for you guys is it's black fly season and you can probably see them going all around the camera right now and it's still pretty early in the morning but they're out and they're starting to get vicious. So I'm wondering what you guys have for tips and techniques to help keep those black flies at bay. So one of the things that I've learned is if I can wear a lighter colored shirt, they don't seem to be attracted to that as much. And uh, the other thing is lots of fly dope. But once I get the chainsaw going, uh, I generally won't pay attention to them and they won't bother me. Um, and I'm wondering now if we all start switching over to these battery powered chainsaws, if that's gonna be a problem that we haven't thought of. Anyway, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you guys do or if you just ignore them and, and carry on. I expect you do. All right, we're gonna go find a tree to cut down here. Okay guys, so you saw that we're not very far away from the house and we've got some white ash right here along the tree line. And I don't wanna cut down all of my big trees. Like I like to look out in the morning having my coffee and, uh, and look at these trees. But we do have some that are starting to fail. Like this one here, the top is getting really dead. So I'm gonna be dropping it. Uh, but I've got one back here and I've moved the tractor out of the way. I've got one back there that I've ribboned and we'll go take a look at it. That's going to be the first one to come down. Okay guys, I'm going to get Karen to step around here so you can see what I'm talking about. But I wanted to talk a little bit about tree selection. And if you've been watching our videos, you know that I'm all about leaving the best trees and taking kind of the inferior trees. So here we've got two ash trees growing out of one stump. And if you take a look at these trees, and I'll get Karen just to pan up a bit, you can see that the one on the right actually has a little bit more of a sweep in it. It's a little bit smaller tree, and that tree should be the one that I take. But when I look at the way these trees are growing and coming out of the stump, I can see a big split coming right up through here. And I think that over time, this tree is going to be the one that fails in a windstorm or something like that. So I think this has a better chance of growing into an even bigger tree. So I'm gonna take this one down. So that's my thought process. And uh, if you don't agree, let me know. Anyway, we're gonna get Karen back out of the way and I'm gonna see if I can get this one on the ground. Okay guys, so I missed my shot on that. Got it lodged up in another one. That's always the way it goes for me first thing in the morning in the woods. So now I'm gonna have to get the 414 going and bring it up and give it a pull. That's probably gonna be a chore because we haven't had that running yet. I might actually, maybe I can grab the backhoe 
and bring it up and put the chain and get it that way. Better plan. Let's do that. say that we're chasing ash logs you can see what I mean there's nothing simple in this business and uh, especially when you get out around like if you're not into a section of woods and you're laying out a road access or something like that if you've got trees around that other trees can get hung up into undoubtedly it's gonna happen so you gotta have some gear around to get yourself out of those messes Hey guys, the other thing is that diesel fuel prices continue to rise and uh, I wouldn't even think about cutting these trees down if I wasn't going to get two dollars a board foot out of my saw logs. Uh, you, you just can't make money anymore. So, uh, you know, it's very important to understand the market and have your prices set before you ever turn a wheel. Uh, get your pencil out, get a piece of paper, work out all your costs with all the new pricing and make sure that there's money left on the table or otherwise you're working for nothing. Okay, we're gonna get this cut up into eight foot six logs, and then we'll bring the Kubota B2601 and the Craneman hydraulic timber trailer back in, and we'll start loading them up. Anything that doesn't make a log is gonna make beautiful firewood. Let's get at it. guys just to check this is the biggest uh, biggest way across here but we're looking at uh, 15 inches at least 13 inches so that's gonna have some nice uh, nice boards in it for our buyer we're gonna run out uh, eight foot six and get the first log man those black flies found us they're hot but I don't think I'm getting bit.
Okay guys, Karen's gonna come in. We've got a decision to make, and I didn't know this when we started cutting the first bunch of logs out, but my buyer said that he would be interested in four foot six and three foot six sections as well. And so I'm coming up now uh, to my third eight foot log, and there's a tremendous amount of taper on this log, but at the four foot six mark, I'm still holding my, uh, my overall dimension pretty well. So uh, I'm going to take a four foot six piece here and then I'm going to take another eight foot six there and he'll take it down to a seven inch top. So I might even be able to get another four foot six or three foot six piece off of that. But we're going to maximize what we can get for boards out of here at two dollars a board foot, right? So let's go four foot six and then we'll see what we can do on the next one. Okay guys, so we'll add up the board feed at the end of the video, but there's three eight foot six logs and one four foot six piece. So I think we'll bring the trailer in and get those loaded. We'll twitch out a little bit of firewood and take it with us as we go because we're close to the house. We won't make a second trip. And then we're gonna move on to the next tree. Okay guys, so you're going to see me learn from one of the lessons that you gave me on one of the videos here in a minute. I'm going to winch this one in, but then I'm going to idle my tractor up. It's on idle right now. I'm going to bring it up to about 2,000 RPM and see if that winch cable comes out any faster for me to get this last log. So we'll get this one in and then we'll see if I learned a lesson or not.
Okay guys, the other thing I wanted to show you was I made a bit of a mess on this stump and whenever I have two trees growing out of the same stump and I'm taking just one stem, I always like to cut a bit of a taper on this to leave it. And in the uh, forestry management course that I took years and years ago with Department of Natural Resources, that was one of the suggestions that they gave us was to cut these off so that the water can run off of it and it's supposed to be less susceptible to get bacteria and stuff that could damage the tree in there. I don't know if that's true. You guys can leave us a comment and, and let us know if you know anything about that. But I'm gonna take a couple seconds here and trim that up just to do that. Okay guys, so not perfect, but maybe that'll help this tree survive for a long time. I guess time will tell. Alright, we're going to get that uh, wood loaded on the craneman, and then I'm going to give Karen a break from the black flies, and I'm going to get another one or two trees, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to scale it up and tell you how much that we ended up getting. gonna save a little fuel and throw some of this smaller firewood on by hand. Karen's gonna go have a cup of coffee. Okay guys we're gonna measure it up. We got a couple four foot pieces. That's a seven incher. This one's nine. So seven is fifteen. So half of that we're gonna call that seven. And the nine inch is twenty four so that's twelve. And these are getting pretty small on the top. That's six inch, he might not actually take that, but we'll, we'll try, so that's a 10. That's a seven incher, so that's a 15. This guy is a six incher, 10. This guy's a 10 incher, 32. 9 inch, 24, and then our big one here, Whoop. 12 inch, so that's 48. 
Okay, now we gotta do the math. Okay guys, so maybe with shooting our video, we were two hours doing this this morning. We got six eight foot logs, we got two four foot logs. It totaled 158 board feet, so a little over $300 uh, for these logs to go. It was pretty much a full trailer load on the Craneman hydraulic timber trailer. And remember these are only eight foot sections, so I don't know if it really would scale out to be half a cord or not, but I usually say half a cord per trailer load. Uh, so two hours, half a cord of firewood, 300 bucks, we're going to call it a win. Anyway guys, I'm going to head back and see if I can pull out another couple of trees. Uh, I know that I've got one back in on the wood lot with a dead top on it and uh, it's wind damaged so that one's going to come out for sure and I'll probably find another one along the way just to make a nice pile of logs for our buyer here. So as always, we're interested in your comments and your feedback. Give us some hints and tips and tricks on how we can do things better and more efficient and uh, come on back and check on us often because you never know what. The Oak Mountain Nacots are going to be up to next. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.